Today we'll play around with 3GS and try to make something pretty. First, let's create a new project, install the 3GS library and types, and create an HTML document with a single canvas. To render stuff into this canvas, we'll need a scene, a camera, and a renderer. Looks great, but let's try to add something. In 3GS, objects are usually a geometry and a material. Let's make a green cube and add it to the scene. To make it more fun and exciting, let's make it move. As usual, we'll use the request animation frame function to update object's positions and render the scene. We can calculate delta time for each frame just by saving the time for the last frame. This looks weird. Huh, we also need to update the last frame time. Now, let's make it move left and right. I swear, every program and library uses different axes for coordinate systems, but I think for 3GS the setup is this one, so we need to move the box by X axis. And I don't want to move it with a constant speed. I want to do what's called a harmonic motion. Basically, it's when the force that's applied to the object is proportional to how far it is from the origin. So I'll update our cube's speed and position based on the formula. See how smooth the movement is? It's a pretty common movement pattern in nature. For example, that's how springs move or how pendulums move. That gave me an idea. What if instead of updating the position, we'll update the rotation? And to make it look like it's swinging from the top, we need to move rotation pivot point or origin up. I think there is no built-in way to do this in 3GS, so we have options. The first one is to start using matrices to update positions, which is scary. Or go a hockey way and move the mesh up, but then move the geometry down. Guess what I chose? Ok, looks like there is always a typo. There is a bug here though. It works ok if the updates are frequent, but look what happens if I switch tabs for some time, forcing it to stop calling animation frames and then switch back. Our physics is broken. Thankfully, there is a way to calculate the pendulum positions for every moment in time. Let's keep track of total time as well and update the rotation based on that. This looks great, though I want it to look more like a pendulum, and that is a string and a ball. And to make the code less horrible, I'll create a separate class for that, so that the pendulum creation and update logic is all in one place. Now let's update the graphics. There is this website called MBNCG with a lot of free to use materials. I explored it a little bit and found this wood material to make something like a ground beneath the pendulum. Our ground will just be a huge plane. Let's not forget to repeat the texture so it doesn't look stretched. I'm gonna start using mesh standard material instead of mesh basic material, so it's affected by light. And that means we need to create a light. Let's do a couple, an ambient light to highlight the whole scene and a directional one to make something like a sun. And I want shadows. For that we need to set flux for the light, shadow casters and receivers and enable them in the renderer. To add some volume to our plane, let's also use a normal map and a roughness map. They usually go along with the color texture as a material bundle. Not sure if you can see it on the video, but our ground now has a little bit more details. I feel like it's a good time to think about different screen sizes. First, I want the canvas to always be full screen. So we'll set its size to windows size and update it on every resize. With every canvas update, we also need to update the camera and the renderer. And to avoid scroll bars that can appear when setting canvas size to the window size, I'll just set overflow to hidden for the body. 
It works, but on vertical screens it's a bit too close. Let's dynamically update camera position based on aspect ratio. Alright, better. Not perfect, but better. Now let's apply some makeup to the pendulum ball. I'll use this marble material. I also think our scene will look better with a bit of fog, so that the line between the ground and the sky is a bit blurry. And the pendulum string should be very thin. So thin, I'm even gonna disable the shadows for it. Honestly, I don't really like this wooden ground anymore. I want something more natural, more outdoors. I tried a couple different options, and I like this one the best. I think it looks much better. And for my final trick, I wanna do a couple of things. First, I'll add parameters to the pendulum constructor so we can vary its position and frequency. Then I'll create 12 of them in a row, but each one is gonna be a bit faster than the other. And I also adjust some colors and camera position. Now let's see what happens. Personally, I think it's kind of fascinating when a simple rule or formula leads to complex movement and patterns like this. I mean, we spent very little effort, but the result looks pretty nice and even a bit mesmerizing. If you're curious, the full code is on the GitHub, feel free to check it out. I hope you had fun watching this and thank you. Bye.